These two were stacked and drilled at the same time. This is the upper support for the pipes and this is the top of the wind chest. If you turn this over and the pallet magnets will be in here like this. I'm told quite often there'll be enough open end grain between these pockets to lose some compressed air. I've sealed the back side here with a little masking tape and I've gone to the veterinary supply, I bought a hypo and some of these needles and I've ground the end off of it so I don't damage myself. And we're going to fill these with shellac. Could be a little neater. None of this will be visible when the calliope is completed. My instructions were to fill this, let it sit for about a half an hour, 20 minutes, something like that. You'll be able to see this level drop down a bit as it soaks into the end grain of the wood. Just top it up a little bit. Hopefully that masking tape will maintain a seal until I'm done here. This has been soaking for a little over a half hour. These are one inch, seven eighths, three quarter and five eighth holes. This piece of wood's about an inch thick. These have dropped a total of about an eighth of an inch. These a bit less as that shellac continues to soak in there. So now I'm just going to suck it out of there. And return it to the original container. And I'll mop up the excess with a paper towel. The original design for the calliope is when you pressed on one of the keys the string pulled open a little valve mechanism that was covering a hole drilled into each of the pipes. The air for the pipes now is coming up from the bottom. My wind chest will be below this. And that hole is opened up by a pallet magnet. So now, each time you press on a key, the string will pull one of these micro switches. With the pipes in position, I have room for three pull cords for each of these switches. As I come down through the line, the space available becomes greater because of the smaller pipes. When I get down to the last of the small pipes, I have room for four cords for the last four switches. I made a slight change to the mounting base. I made them like this. And when that goes in here, this tab will clear the front pipes. And because these pipes are staggered, this rear tab will clear back here. Very briefly, I'll go over how I made these mounts for the micro switches. Using 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood, I cut a bunch of strips 5 8 of an inch wide. I had a master that was 2 and 5 16 inches long, so I could cut a bunch of strips all identical. I had another master that I drilled the holes in to match the micro switches. And I laid that drilling guide on top of all these, lined it up, drilled the holes so that all the sides were identical. This two inch long cap screw was just a little bit too long and I had to cut about that much off of there. Put a nut on there, snip it off with a bolt cutter, clean up the threads on the grinder and I have a video that shows how to cut threads on a threaded rod or a bolt. You can refer to that. When I tighten that up these two pieces became parallel. Took a piece of wood, glued that on there with some clamps, held it, made sure everything was was square. When that dried, I cut that off and sanded it flush. Took another piece of wood and glued it across the back. And that overlapped the piece that I put down here on the base. So I made this very rigid. And later, I found that was the type base that I wanted, and I took this and glued it on top of there. 
The only difference is the one for the four switches instead of the three, and for that, this two inch bolt was just barely long enough. These nuts are not tight, they're just on here hand tight. Before I put this together for the final time, I'll put a little Loctite on there, snug them up, not too tight, these are just plastic, and hopefully that'll be the last time I see those. Drilling the pilot holes for the screws. I'm using the drill to farm the threads. Run it in and out a few times. It makes it a lot easier to drive these in by hand later. And now putting the final screws into the mounting bracket. Now I need to take a square and mark where the center of each of these levers are for the micro switches. And I need to extend that forward so I can come up here and drill a hole in this front facing piece of wood. That'll be for the pull cords for each of these switches. These holes are for the pull cord guides. Putting a backer block in here. This is 1 8 inch outside diameter nylon tubing sold at automotive stores. It's a little bit too small for brake lines, probably used for shifters. This wood is 3 quarters of an inch thick. I have cut these to an inch and a half length. And I won't install these finally until after this is finished. And these four line up with these four switches and so forth down the line. The job of this is to keep the pull cord from being abraded on this piece of wood as it goes back and forth. The movement of the pull cord going through here is very slight. It will be less than a quarter of an inch as it pulls these switches back and forth. Pushing this in here can be a little bit difficult. I'd like for it to protrude on this side just a little. So you push it in as far as you can, take a cordless, then actually you can pull it back out pretty easy. Getting it to go in there the first place is the tough part. Screwed this back together and stuck all the pipes in here just to have a look in there and make sure everything still clears. A lot easier to find a mistake now than later. These pipes have all been rough cut to length. Put them in here as a trial assembly and to see how these were working. The pipes have all been marked where the mouth will be cut. This was the wind chest on the original Calliope. My wind chest will be down here. Each of these holes will be covered by a pallet magnet. In this position it's sealed and then when it opens it lets air go into that particular pipe. These are connected to a magnet driver. The magnet driver gets a signal either from a keyboard key, one of those micro switches, or from a MIDI reader, 